You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is 50 by Chris Kelso. Ipso facto, everyone lives by selling something. The council have been selling ex-cons like me into slavery for decades. I'm a number now. Can't complain, though. Really, I can't. Two years ago, the council pulled me out of roadkill collection, assigned me to working in memory cutting. No idea why, must have seen something in me. Maybe I've paid my dues. It's an easy job, memory cutting. Pay is decent for a council income. Just for selling people amnesia capsules. For being a state-funded drug dealer. There's a lot invested in these little tabs of oblivion, mind you. And hey, I'm in a good racket. I'm grateful. My mother is proud for sure. Glasgow. Some snooty precinct Clyde's side. I do enjoy a hometown job. Makes me appreciate the warmer climates when I get them. Know what I mean? If only I could help the city forget Charles Rennie McIntosh and Alexander Greek Thompson. Still, the man codenamed Mr. Jiro appears at the bottom of the street wearing orange council waterproofs. Looks like everyone else in this city. Like a starving proletariat ghost. A sad little slum rat of a man. He comes into the asbestos light. Papery skin laying over deep angles of bone. God, this used to be me. I reach out, shake his trembling hand, damp, steel cold. Addict? We enter the cooperative building illuminated by LED lights. Council branch number 49. Jiro eyeballs me as we walk up the stairway side by side. He tries to smile. Good to finally meet you, I say awkwardly. Your emails were vague. It's better to give specifics in person. Jiro replies with haunted uncertainty. In that moment, we share a synapse of recognition. Deja vu building like bees in prime swarm, then disperses. I'm sure standing face to face in our identical council waterproofs, we look like a mirror image of the same broken West of Scotland man. Have we met? I ask him. He shakes his head no. Fair enough. But Mr. Jiro keeps eyeballing me. He has these dipped eyes. The sad eyes of an ex-con. Of someone who's just a number now. In a former life, we probably did jobs together. Ran in similar circles. Poor guy must have got a bad gig. Corpse handler or a county cutthroat. Something brutal. As I say, I'm grateful I got a decent hand. I always wanted to be a memory cutter. You're lucky. I get redeployed all the damn time. He says, spreading himself on the office couch like a recumbent statue. Listen, I'm about to do something terrible. I can feel it. I don't know what it is yet, but I know I won't want to remember any of it, okay? Okay. I've heard it all before, blah, blah, blah. They've all done terrible things or are about to do terrible things. Ex-cons, doctors, coppers, and stay-at-home moms. Thieves, killers, pedophiles, cheats, and liars. Just like everyone else in this big, icy universe. There's always someone who needs to forget their own nature. But this isn't the time to conjugate. I need to make the sale. Quotas to be met and all that. Aye. Industry axiom. The difference between involvement and commitment is like ham and eggs. The chicken is involved, the pig is committed. I start my spiel. First, let me put your mind at ease. Our product is synthesized and sourced locally right here in Glasgow. Truth? Our product is synthesized in Amsterdam labs by mechanical behemoths, sourced in ethically bankrupt human testing facilities of southern China. I go on. See, the pill destroys neurons and proteins, rewires connections between the memory and emotion. It's very much foolproof. Better still, it's guaranteed to permanently remove bad memories. We can implant new ones for you as well. Nice ones, in pill form. Just an extra 30. 
truth? It destroys neurons and proteins. Sure, but it's far from foolproof. Nothing can be guaranteed. Reconsolidation of memories remains entirely possible. All it takes is the right trigger, a phrase, an image, a number. Still, they're hardly going to put that in the advertising campaign, are they? I'm a salesman, for Christ's sakes. I don't want new memories, he says. I just need enough to get rid of what I'm going to do. You're positive you don't want something new in there before I go? It's very reasonably priced. Council discount. He's having none of it. Commitment. I don't want to miss an opportunity with this guy. Vulnerability makes him exploitable. Another industry saying. See, a gap in recall might lead your future self to become suspicious and attempt a self-rewiring to explain an unaccountable timeline blip. I thought it was foolproof. He says, looking at me skeptically out of the corner of his eye. Come on, nothing is completely foolproof. You can't sell a donut without acknowledging the whole, right? I don't have an extra 30. Let it go, don't be too pushy. Might frighten him away. Well, I'm not much of a writer anyway. I'll give you enough to rearrange the old filing cabinets, okay? That'll be 40 large. Jiro sits up, pulls a wad of crushed notes from the back pocket of his Levi's. Here, he says. I take the notes, fan them, smell them, crunch them between my palms. Forty large. Mr. Jiro seizes the blister pack of memory-erasing drugs and pops two of the blue pills into his shaking palm. Uh, see, you'll have to wait till you're off council property before you take those. You know how funny they get about that stuff when it happens in their own backyard. He just looks at me gravely. I notice on the back of one of the bills there's something written in blue biro. Fifty. Fifty? I say. What's fifty? Mr. Jiro's eyes glaze over, as if the number has activated something in his mind. Zombified, he reaches into his Levi's, pulls out a long-barreled pistol. Council standard issue. He pumps the slide stop, rests his thumbs over the hammer. The nozzle is placed to my forehead. I'm sorry, he says. Consider yourself redeployed. This was 50 by Chris Kelso. Chris is an award-winning genre writer, editor, and illustrator from Scotland. His short stories and articles have appeared in magazines and journals across the UK, US, and Canada, including Antipodian SF, Lovecraft Ezine, Daily Science Fiction, SF Signal, Dark Discoveries, Pantheon, Evergreen Review, Sensitive Skin, Shoreline of Infinity, The Ergonaut, New Coin, Verbicide, and many more. His work has been translated into French, and he is the two-time winner of the Ginger Nuts of Horror Novel of the Year in 2016 for Unger House Radicals and in 2017 for its sequel, Shrapnel Apartments. The Black Dog Eats the City made Weird Fiction Review's Best of 2014 list. Find more on his website, chris-kelso.com. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.